Good morning, Christy here from Crumbo's Chronicles. Look at this bench, so cute. So uh, we today are gonna go back into Big Bend and we're going to explore some off-roading there and uh, then perhaps go and check out this ghost town that's about five miles away from the campground. Um, and there's some old mines there. So that sounds like fun. So let's get on this adventure today. And I have messed up the sky for you. I'm sorry, here. Magic. <laughs> Rio Grande, Rio Grande. This this weird path here I'm walking on, trying not to trip. But that is Mexico right there. Pretty sandy, yeah, it looks pretty muddy. Um, it looks like it was a boat ramp. Um, I don't know how muddy that is because we did get some rain yesterday here. You're seeing the uh, effects of it on the road with the dirt all over. But this is all like crackled looking like it wants to just break up. Oh. So what stops the border crossing from happening? Except for that mountain and there's not really any towns here. Except for Boquiles, which we went and visited yesterday. hike we're gonna do trail has steep climbs oh boy Santa Elena Canyon Trail it's the most popular part of this park hey if it's like this <laughs> it's like going to Mexico it says the walls of these mountains that we're going to be surrounded by are as high as 1550 feet above us the rio grande serves as the international boundary between mexico and the united states here the river unifies eight protected areas of the united states state of texas and mexico into one remarkable three million acre conservation area Sweet. Depending on rainfall, this creek bed should dry, could be dry in thick mud or flowing water. Carefully assess conditions and your abilities before attempting to cross. Oh, we do. <laughs> we have to cross the Rio Grande to get to that trail head. Okay. See that sign? But it's too deep. Um, too deep right there. So the family has gone down there. They're crossing over there. Looks a little flowy over there. Um, oh no. Well, let me just uh, then get a shot. 
we had other plans here. Some of this looks pretty thicky mud. Yeah. Those kids are about to officially cross over to Mexico. How is that okay? They're making you cross into Mexico. So yeah, actually, that's illegal. Really, that's the USA. That's Mexico. And really what we're do wanted to do with this hike is go up this a whole bunch switchbacks. And I, I guess it brings you down here to that area in between. Then you're in the canyon of the two. Yeah, but we don't need to do that. The kids testing out the muddiness. All right, we're gonna leave you with this shot right here. And the Arizona family, they're saying it out loud that they have crossed over illegally. They have, they've taken their family over to Mexico and they're gonna go back over to the USA real quick. Obviously they're not trying to break the law, but like I said, we had other plans. We didn't plan on this. No, we certainly did not bring enough supplies of anything. Um, so, we're going to head back to the Jeep and do what we plan to do. Okay, in the desert. And this has been since uh, California deserts and Arizona are these plants called Ocotillo. I'm on the wrong side of the sun to show you this grand one. It seems that when we got into West Texas and in Big Bend, they uh, are so much bigger and greener. And I think a couple of times a year, they bloom pretty orange flowers at the top. But they are everywhere here. We're about to enter into a Ocotillo Grove. And uh, I'm not sure, you never know, sometimes outside of the grove is a bigger population and they're everywhere around us. But they are my favorite, favorite desert plant. That's right, I'm a plant identifier now. Look at me. jackal here at the edge of alamo creek gilberto luna raised a large family in this small house called a jackal built from rock earth and plant fiber the dwelling was well adapted to desert conditions notice a dramatic temperature di difference as you step inside luna irrigated the land he farmed with flood water diverted from the nearby creek and then it has it in Spanish. Isn't that nice? Jackal construction is sometimes called wattle and daub to weatherproof the structure. Luna applied mud plaster to lattice wall work walls of cane grass and ocotillo. Okay. Love it even more. It's got the ocotillo branches here. I can see them. I recognize. Ocotillo. Is it cooler in there? Um, somewhat. You must have a small, short family. And a dead bird. Oh. Well, this is neat. Did you see what the branches are? Yeah. Oh, this is pretty cool. I'm going to use a large boulder as his back wall. Uh -huh. Huh. Old barbed wire fence. Uh, that might be later.
construction. These are juniper right here. Must be a sterling tree juniper. I don't know. I get a shot of it all the way. Yeah. But to let people in is pretty neat. Don't get eaten by a spider. That the tarps off of the jackal? You found desert glass for me? Sure. Thank you. My precious gems from my husband. <laughs> That was a jackal, Luna's jackal. All right. We're off-roading. So we went here yesterday, Boquios. Then today, and by the way, we're camping right here. We drove all of this, all of this, all of this, all of that. And then we just did the dirt road right here, came back out right here, and that's where we're at right now. So we just got a little quick jaunt over to our campground. And then we're gonna go there. The Terlingua Ghost Town. Fun. But first, a taco truck. Food truck. Rawr. <laughs> it's the dinosaur. Timbo's getting us some food at the food truck here. Ooh. Thank you, sir. Oh, you go, oh, we're going to go home. Okay. Ta-da! All right, we are in Terlingua Ghost Town. Let's go figure it out. Wondering where Wiley was. <laughs> so we just left the trading company, Terlingua Trading Company. This right here is 
Casa de la Cultura before burning down was Hotel Chisos. It had two stories, eight guest rooms, and a walk-in cooler. Number three, the old mine shaft right here. That shaft is one of the hundreds that were hand dug. They're over eight miles of tunnels. Oh. Sure. Let's go check out the old jail. Okay, I got a cheat sheet here, so forgive me when I'm reading something. But this is the Trilingua Jail. It says a smoker spent the night. Oh, there's lots of cigarette butts in here. It says that the people who were detained here most of the time were just drunk and sleeping it off and they were released the next day at mealtime. So the Starlight Theater was originally a motion picture house in 1939. Its roof was lost during a summer storm, hence the name. The roof was replaced. 1991 when the restaurant opened proceed down the hill to the road. Oh. <laughs> Cute. oh and now it's a restaurant I get it Some birds nest up there Cute little restaurant. The trading post had a lot of like museum type stuff in there. Um, that was the trading post. Starlight, jail, Jimbo. An art gallery and it looks like the construction of it matches these buildings out here they can barely see. I see them. It's a cactus house now. <laughs> okay, so the ghost town once was home to 2,000 people. And it was a thriving mercury mining town. So you would think that most of the people died of mercury. There's a cemetery on our way out. We'll get it. Um, there's like, what did they say, 400 people? or Yeah, 400 people buried in that cemetery. And uh, none of them died from mercury. Most of them died in 1918 from influenza. And sorry about the bumpy. But so I guess this ghost town is now an active community of music and art and uh, a little bit of tourism, I guess. used to have an ice cream parlor back in the day when it was a thriving town before it was a ghost town. So it was abandoned in the 40s to be repopulated in the 70s and uh, yeah lots of musicians and artists live in here.
cliff side turn around, cliff edge of earth. Kimo likes to do these kind of turns, doesn't he? Straight ahead are the Chisos Mountains. The bumpity bumpity bump bump bumps. As wavy as our camera action right there. Chisos. They got ruins in their backyard here. Oh, and they made a little area stop for a second. Oh my goodness. So cute. Look at that. <laughs> That's cool. Thanks for helping us to preserve the natural history and beauty. Terlingua Ghost Town. Come back soon. <laughs> I like that little beetle right there. <gasps> and there's a fake It's an Okatia piece of art with bottles on it. How cute. Okay, and as promised, the cemetery. People leave the strangest things. Hmm. Oh, bazooka bubble. I know. How great is that gum up sitting out there in the sun? Somebody left their vape pen. Silly people. This is the oldest one, 1903, died in 1931. Huh. This one was 90 years old. Another one that's February 24th, 1934. Wow, and you can't even tell how big it is because everything they do in the desert blends in with the desert. Houses, all of it, they all blend in. I like the, uh, the tiles that were put in this one. They're actually in, in there. It's very pretty. But this one just died in 2014. They were only 15 years old. <laughs> oh, I gotta go back there. This must have been a little guy too. What's with the dinosaur? Man. So when he just died in 1996. Oh, he's got one of your road runners. Jimbo's got a souvenir like that from Boquitas. Boquitas, Boquitas. I'm never gonna say it right. There. 54 to 2017. A Terlingua legend, Dr. Doug. Douglas Paul Blackman. He must have been a partier. <laughs> oh no, is there a bigger party over there? <laughs> oh, he gets a special fenced in area. Oh, yeah, much bigger partier than Dr. Doug over there. What's going on here? Edward Harlan. Theranaut, 66 to 2002. <laughs> That's the best. Shot of this sign, I do everything backwards. Terlingua Cemetery, 1902, listed on the National Register for Historic Sites. 
Maintaining and protected by the Terlingua Preservation Foundation. All right. All right, this is where we're gonna close it out. We got a long travel day tomorrow. I'll tell you about it in the morning. It's not nighttime, but you can do your thing. Say goodbye, babe. Goodbye, babe. <laughs>